First off, you're having a bit of a full circle moment here in Texas with discussing Problemista yeah. a year after its premiere at South by. Since that premiere, the discussions about your work you've had along the way, the normal life experiences, has your relationship to your film changed for the better or deepened within the past year? Are you seeing things through a new lens through that time or not so much and you're putting all that energy into your next projects? You know, it's it's weird because I, I in a way, it feels like I haven't, even though I, I obviously haven't been working on this movie every day, but I, it, because it's, because I, I wrote it and directed it, it, it feels like it's been with me since I was writing it. So no, even though a year has gone by, it almost feels like it, it was just yesterday and this is yeah. and I'm doing it. And part of me doesn't believe that I won't be here a year from now with this poster behind me. Yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah. It's an incredible accomplishment, so congratulations. Oh, thank yeah. you so much. Speaking of South By, I asked you this next question to you at the Q&A last year, and I wanted to ask it again, not because I'm lazy, but because I'm so fascinated by your writing process, and right. I think others are as well. But packed into this film are, are great laughs, interesting observations, unique abstract thoughts, and many truths. When it comes to fitting your ideas into a narrative, are you digging into your back pocket to fit these ideas you've collected over the years, or is it more of an organic process than that? Uh, it feel it, it definitely feels like it ends up being organic. I think that there's a very stubborn part of me that keeps going back to the the my well of of like musings and ideas that I've like, oh, I didn't get to do that last time. Maybe I'll get to like put it in here and then. Mm -hmm the project is going to be what the project wants to be and then uh, those things end up just getting like cut or like end up not being a part of it but i and i think that sometimes it feels like uh like something has nothing to do with this with the greater goal of the the script but then when executed, I think it's like, oh no, thematically they do they do belong here. Like something that jumps at me in thinking about it is that Bank of America scene, for example, right? Where yeah. it's it's not really like does the movie need it? I don't know. Does the plot need it? I don't know, but it 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 like encapsulates the 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 world of the movie and the tone of the movie and the purpose of it and um and that's actually a question I don't like when I'm editing something. It's like, do we need this? And it's like, well, actually, mm. no, it means the movie. So if we're asking that question, if we get too far down the road with that question, then everything we do is gone. <laughs> yeah. But uh, um, yeah, no. So I hope that answers your question. Yeah, uh, I'm very glad that you kept that that scene in there that was fantastic reason i ask is because i don't know if i could come up with like the the flashback bubbles that you do or the i, mm -hmm. I don't know what you're calling it but the hell cave that kind of perfectly captures how we think in stressful moments but what, what have you been plugging into all your life creatively that you feel best contributed to the way you see the world and the stories you tell Specifically for this movie, um, I think I tapped into all the like fairy tales that I liked when I when I was a kid. Mm -hmm. uh, if only for so like structural and visual components, but generally I like I like the mismatching of uh, of visual references and uh, um, yeah no I'm just I'm just a very visual person and I think. Um, I was a very visual writer for the longest time, and it only makes sense for me to to direct this. Yeah, yeah. To kind of dip into the, the the art direction, art can be seen almost everywhere in every shot. Even street puddles have artistic expressions there, or the the garbage on a street. I'm curious about developing that look and feel. And are you someone who can walk down the street and see the art and things? I think so. I, 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 especially garbage. I love like garbage still lives and, and that puddle. I'm so glad that you're bringing it up because it's like, 
uh, it was one of those where we were like, oh no, the puddle's not ready. And I know it sounds stupid, but but we need to get that puddle to look exactly like what it should be like. And it was like yeah. multiple departments working on the puddle. And I'm so proud of that puddle. And uh, yeah. it's just sort of those kinds of things that like really, really make a world and hopefully uh, gets you to see the movie with gets you to see New York with the with the love that I have for it, which it doesn't doesn't excuse the city for being difficult and gross, but it, it sort of loves it despite of that. What would you say are some of the oddest places that you've found creative inspiration, whether it is trash or what have you? Definitely definitely like sidewalk trash is a big big motivator. <laughs> um but also I love like um like dry really sh offices where like uh you have like dirty dirty ceilings or or vents that are kind of askew and and or like like power outlets that are kind of tilted and just just like little mistakes like that I I, mm. I love speaking of offices where did I don't even know how, I can't wrap my mind around uh, the, the moment where you're cli climbing up the file cabinets, up through things, and it, you back out, and it feels like the, I don't know, it's probably a bad example, but like the, the moment in Cabin in the Woods where you get to see all the cubes, so I'm just curious about creating that concept. I mean, the first thing that comes is the, the feeling of feeling trapped, right? And it's mm -hmm. like that like really frustrated like oh i think i'm just going in circles kind of feeling yeah and so then I, I i knew that i wanted to represent that visually and i hadn't wrapped because it's like you know when you're writing something you're not or at least i'm not thinking about i'm not getting too granular on how it's going to be produced mm -hmm. um and then with when working with our production designer with katie uh and it got time to actually make it we were like wrapping our minds around it and then I just started sketching and this it, it, it was when I mean to actually get pretty granular it was when uh I realized that the table on one room could serve as the vent for the room beneath it mm. that it the structure actually made made yeah. sense yeah it looked really good I, I know we're just about out of time uh so I'll, I'll wrap things up with this question. I love the concept of Bobby, played by Riza, who freezes himself to engage with the future that better mm -hmm. appreciates his work. Of all the artists who've created works ahead of their time, whether Emily Dickinson, Billy Wilder, or Zappa, who do you most wish that artist could have experienced that chirogenic sleep to wake up to today's world to see how the world would respond to their work? Oh. oh, oh, that's a very good question. You know, and a question that's maybe like appropriate to this movie is maybe like Kafka. Mm hmm. Yeah. And it's like, oh, no, your sad little stories actually are like required reading in high school. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah. yeah.